Oh, the weather outside is frightful because the game master is spiteful. So I guess it's time to roll. Saving throw, saving throw, saving throws. Listen. I know it's January, but I wrote this script in December, so I'm still throwing the joke in there. Let's talk about weather in Pathfinder 2nd Edition on this episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Travelers and tourists, my name is Mark and I'm the local disaster tour guide. That's right, I'm a storyteller who thinks that the weather is incredible today. Guess what? You're taking fire damage. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder. Today we are continuing my Storytelling in Pathfinder 2e series where we're going to be taking a look at the rules for weather in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. We're going to talk about the tips, tricks, and advice that Paizo gives us for handling weather in our games and we're going to take a look at the different mechanical impacts that weather can have on our games. Now, the Storytelling in Pathfinder 2e series is a series that is intended for game masters of every skill level, from beginner to advanced, and even if Pathfinder 2e is not your preferred game, I still encourage you to stick around and be a part of the conversation. Over my years of storytelling, I have discovered that studying a multitude of games can teach you a lot of wonderful things that you can bring back to your favorite game. So regardless of what your favorite game may happen to be, I hope that this conversation will be beneficial to you, and I encourage you to stick around and be a part of it. Now, in this series, we have been working through the different modes of play in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Encounter Mode, Exploration Mode, and Downtime Mode. And right now, we are working on Exploration Mode. It is an intermediate mode that exists between the tension of encounter mode and the story progress of downtime mode, and we've spent some time discussing how exploration mode really focuses on the environment that your players are in and the sense of discovery that you can bring to your story. Weather is a fantastic tool that you can use to add life and excitement to your stories and to help your players really get into the world that they are exploring. From heavy fog banks to ominous storm clouds to the oppressive heat of the noontime sun, weather has powerful evocative effects when it comes to our emotions and it can play a major role in making your story more engaging. Now I do want to say real quick, this video is going to be focusing on weather in Pathfinder 2nd Edition and next week's video, the follow-up to this video, is going to be talking about natural disasters. And on the day that this video goes live on YouTube, I'm actually going to have the natural disasters video available in early access for my patrons. Yep, that's right. This is the YouTube stuff section. <laughs> if you're interested in supporting this channel financially, you can check out my Patreon page, where you can get occasional perks like early access to some of my videos. And even if you're not interested in being a patron for this channel, I still want to encourage you to check out my free Discord page, and the links to both of those can be found in the video description down below. Alright, with all those things out of the way, let's get started. Now, before we start talking about specific subjects, one of the things I want to do is give you some quick points of reference that you can check out as a storyteller in Pathfinder 2e. The majority of the content that I'll be talking about in this video can be found in the Climate section of the Game Mastery chapter in the Pathfinder 2e Core Rulebook on page 517. There are a few other tables in that chapter as well that get referenced among these rules, and those tables are Table 10.4, Simple DCs, Table 10.11, the Environmental Damage Table, which offers a scale for environmental damage that your players might suffer, ranging from mild to moderate to major to massive. There are also some references to Table 1012, 
which is the environmental features table which lists different features of the environment including weather and offers a skill proficiency band for skill checks that might be associated with those particular features. This table can help you determine if certain weather effects might be associated with trained, expert, master, or even legendary difficulty skill checks, which references back to Table 10 for the simple DC's table that I discussed earlier. Another table that we'll be referencing a little bit is Table 1013, which is the Temperature Effects Table, which is going to tell you how quickly certain temperature bands can fatigue your party while they're traveling, can give you intervals where your players might suffer damage from the extremes of temperature, and even tells you the scale of the environmental damage that they might suffer. So those are the direct references that we'll be talking about today, but some of the other rules that you might want to reference include the rules on perception and detecting creatures found on page 465 of the core rulebook, and that'll give you insight into conditions like hidden and concealed, and rules for things like the seek action, and you'll also want to read up on some of the skills that might be relevant when your player characters want to deal with weather. The two most obvious skills are nature and survival. And I'll go ahead and say here that the weather rules tend to be a little bit vague when it comes to Pathfinder 2e. They aren't really clear what the dividing line for nature and survival is when it comes to handling weather. From a basic reading of the core rulebook, nature seems to be the skill that you use if you need to recall knowledge for weather-related phenomenon, but survival gives you access to things like the sense direction activity, and there are certain survival feats that can help you deal with things like the extremes of temperatures. So as a game master, you'll want to read up on both of those, and you'll want to be prepared to make some judgment calls about which skill is going to be appropriate when your players want to deal with environmental effects. Additionally, if you start talking about things like high-speed winds and player characters or monsters that have access to a fly speed, you'll want to take a look at the acrobatic skill for the rules on maneuvering in flight. But that's just a quick reference to some of the things you'll want to be familiar with when you're using weather rules in Pathfinder 2e. Let's dive into some more specific concepts. Now, one of the things I want to go ahead and say about the subject of weather in Pathfinder 2e is that the rules from Pathfinder 2e are relatively sparse. They don't give us a lot of information. The number of pages devoted to this topic is pretty short, and there's definitely a lot of Game Master judgment call that comes with using weather rules in Pathfinder 2e. In fact, the very first piece of advice I'd like to give you has nothing to do with the core rulebook or anything that they tell us, and that is, if you really want to make use of weather in Pathfinder 2e, it's probably worth your time as a storyteller to do some research on weather outside of the game. The world of Pathfinder doesn't have things like Doppler radar and advanced weather detection technology that it can use to prepare for the extremes of environmental change. And that means that characters living inside of the Galarian setting, or whichever setting you're using, are probably going to be relying on folk tales and other naturalist methods of trying to determine what the weather will be and preparing for the weather ahead. For an example of this, my father grew up in rural Kentucky, and every year he likes to give the woolly worm winter forecast for the season ahead. And if you grew up in the backwoods of Kentucky, you know what a woolly worm winter is, and if you aren't from the backwoods, that probably sounds crazy to you. But things like that are the kinds of beliefs and the kinds of things that people might rely on if they're attempting to predict weather without modern advanced technology, so, if you want to use weather inside of your game, it's probably worth your while to read up on things like the Farmer's Almanac or other folk traditions that might be used for people who are trying to make predictions about the weather. By the way, the storytelling potential of old folk tales like that is immeasurable. It'd be too big a tangent for this video, but that's definitely something fun you can read up on, and if you want to use weather inside your game, this is definitely a fun place you can go. Before I dive into serious mechanical rules, there is a principle in regards to weather in Pathfinder 2e that Paizo seems to hint at 
without ever explicitly stating. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it to you explicitly here. And that is, when it comes to weather, less is more, at least in terms of mechanical impact. Weather, typically, should not be having a very drastic effect on your story or on your game unless there is something very specific to the encounter or the scenario or the story that you're trying to tell. The effects of weather in terms of your actual dice rolls and in terms of the actual mechanics of play should lean more towards the milder side of the scale the majority of the time. As we go through this conversation, I'm going to mention different penalties you can use. I'm going to talk about the environmental damage table. And one of the patterns you're going to see is most of the examples that Paizo gives us are examples of very minor penalties or very minor amounts of damage. Paizo tends to push towards the smaller side of the scale when it comes to weather. It saves the extreme side of the scale for things like natural disasters, which we're going to talk about next week. So just be aware that when you want to apply weather to your game, it is typically best to apply it very lightly and occasionally to just let it be the storytelling equivalent to set dressing. All right, so in the climate section, the very first paragraph introduces the most common rule that you will probably use as a storyteller if you are applying weather as a mechanical impact on your story, and that is the circumstance penalty. Weather typically can be used to apply circumstance penalties to different checks inside of the game, and they mention a scale that ranges from minus one to minus four. So, for example, if a character is trying to perceive a monster that is in the fog bank, they might take a minus one penalty to their perception on that particular check, and if they're trying to hear someone shouting during a hailstorm, they might have a penalty on the perception check to hear what is going on. By the same token, if a character is attempting to track a particular creature or a particular person, but there has been some recent snowfall that has covered those tracks, you might apply a minus two circumstance penalty to the survival check as well. Essentially, when weather interferes with your players, you want to use these circumstance penalties to help reflect that interference. Another classic example would be a penalty on ranged attack rolls during high winds. And that truly is the most common weather mechanic that you will probably use as a storyteller. As I mentioned earlier, less is more when it comes to mechanics, so the majority of the time you're probably not going to apply a circumstance penalty at all. A light drizzle of rain really doesn't inflict any penalties on your players. It's the severe winds, it's the major storms, where those penalties are going to start to become relevant. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the specific types of weather and what impact they might have. First up is fog. And fog is essentially, well, low-level clouds that are obscuring everything. Fog can be used as cover for your player characters to approach an enemy forest, or it can be used to heighten the tension if the players hear something hunting them from the mist. Fog can range anywhere from a mild haze where you can still see at pretty good distances to incredibly heavy fog banks that can limit vision to 20, maybe 30 feet at the best. And when you deal with fog, the most important rules you'll want to know here is definitely the rules for detecting creatures. You want to know how the seek action works. You want to know how conditions like concealed and hidden will apply to creatures. When creatures can't rely on precise senses like vision, exploration can become a lot more tense because you don't know what's just beyond the edge of what you can see. The next type of weather that they discuss is precipitation, and this can cover rain and snow and thunderstorms, any kind of scenario where water is falling out of the sky. Now they do specifically note that things like a drizzle or a very light snowfall are not going to have any mechanical impact on your players and are more just kind of flavor to whatever story you are telling. However, as precipitation grows a little more intense, you can start applying certain mechanical effects to your players. For example, the circumstance penalties to perception checks that we mentioned earlier, those start becoming appropriate. Precipitation also introduces another area where weather can impact your players, and that is in their ability to travel. 
Typically, players can travel for about eight hours a day before they become fatigued. However, traveling through a serious rainfall or a major snowstorm can be very fatiguing for your players and can cut their overall travel time in half. So, on a normal day, they could travel for eight hours, but if they're trying to travel through the rain, they can only travel about four hours before the fatigue sets in. They also bring up an important point here, and that is that different weather conditions can overlap in terms of their effects. For example, a character that is soaked by a rainstorm would treat cold environments as one step more severe in terms of when they become fatigued or how much environmental damage they might take. A final note from the precipitation section covers thunderstorms and lightning damage. Here is your excuse to go all Mount Olympus on your players and start chucking lightning bolts. This section notes that the typical lightning bolt deals a moderate amount of environmental damage and that the most severe lightning bolts from the most severe thunderstorms can deal major amounts of environmental damage as well. And I want you to notice the scale. Getting struck by lightning in Pathfinder 2e typically will deal moderate amounts of environmental damage. Let me re-emphasize, when it comes to weather effects, Paizo tips the scale towards the lighter end of the spectrum and saves the most extreme examples for the most extreme circumstances, like natural disasters that we'll be discussing later. As a Game Master, you have to make a judgment call on exactly what you want to use, but based on their examples like people getting struck by lightning, typically only being moderate damage, it is clear that Paizo is trying to push Game Masters towards relatively mild environmental effects. But, since we mentioned it, let's go ahead and talk about temperature. Table 1013 gives us a list of different temperature bands. There is your normal, comfortable temperature that most people would enjoy, and then you have different bands of temperature on the cold and hot side of the scale that start at mild and then travel up to severe, extreme, and incredible. As the temperature scale grows more intense, the effects of those temperature become more noticeable. The length of time that you can travel before becoming fatigued gets shorter and shorter. The amount of environmental damage that you can take will slowly start to grow, although again we should note that it caps at moderate environmental damage at incredible temperatures, and they even give you guidelines for how often a character might take environmental damage in the different temperature bands. Now one thing that they note in the temperature section is that characters can use clothing to offset the effects of increasingly hostile temperatures. Now, specifically in the core rulebook, they mention using clothing to offset the effects of cold temperatures, and it is definitely a little bit easier to offset the effects of cold temperatures, but there are also historical examples of different clothing styles being used to offset the effects of hot temperatures as well, so I feel like clothing can go either way on this scale, but Paizo does offer some guidelines that a character who takes the time to dress themselves appropriately for a given environment can completely negate the effects of severe cold temperatures and possibly hot temperatures at Game Master discretion, and that that same level of preparation can lower an extreme temperature band to a severe band in terms of the effects that a player character might suffer. However, at least as written in the core rulebook, Clothing is not going to be sufficient to negate or lower the effects of incredible temperatures of cold or hot varieties. Now let me say, that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be some fantasy, magical options that you could use in those situations, but regular clothing, at least rules as written, negates severe temperature bands and can lower the effects of extreme temperature bands to where they are treated as severe instead. Then, the final thing that they discuss in the climate section is wind. And for severe winds, they offer some different pointers for Game Masters to think about as well. The most obvious here is a circumstance penalty to ranged attack rolls. Now, I know I've said this several times during this video, but again, I want to stress any circumstance penalties that you use here, you want to keep those penalties minimal. 
A minus one or a minus two in Pathfinder 2E is very powerful, and a minus three or minus four penalty can make a check almost impossible. So when you start handing out penalties for attack rolls, that can be very impactful on the combats that you are running. So use wind penalties sparingly, but that is one of the things you can do to make your players adjust their tactics when it comes to fight scenes. Another thing that they note here is that severe winds have the ability to blow out torches. Yes, this is a fun surprise you can drop on your party. <laughs> Hooded lanterns are typically protected where wind will not blow out the flame inside, although particularly extreme winds still could. But if you want to surprise your party, let a sudden burst of wind blow out the torches that they were using to try to hunt down, oh, whatever dangerous creature of the night they're after. Finally, wind becomes particularly important if you're dealing with creatures that have a fly speed. Creatures that critically fail an acrobatics check to maneuver in flight during severe winds will fall, and if a creature has no successful checks to maneuver in flight during a round, they can still fall as well. Wind can pretty quickly batter a flying creature. Also, in extreme cases, wind can actually knock around people who are traveling on the ground as well, and they do note that small creatures and tiny creatures can take a minus one or minus two penalty on skill checks to try to maneuver through wind in those circumstances. And they don't specifically mention it, but loud winds is another one of those situations where a penalty to auditory perception checks I think would be very reasonable as a storyteller. But that covers the different types of climate that are discussed in the Pathfinder 2e Core rulebook. They do move on to natural disasters, but I feel like natural disasters deserve their own video, so we're going to save that for next time. If you're interested in early access to that video, or future videos with early access, feel free to check out my Patreon. And don't forget that I have a free Discord community as well. But the time has come for me to turn the conversation over to you. What are your thoughts about using weather in Pathfinder 2e or other role-playing games? Are there rules for weather that I overlooked, or are there questions that you have about how to use weather? Do you have some good dramatic examples of how you have used weather in a game? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for being a part of the conversation, and have a wonderful day.